Good morning, everyone. Sorry to, to keep you waiting. Hope you're enjoying this fantastic weather. I uh, loved seeing a lot of you a uh, week and a half ago at our annual economic forecast luncheon. That was wonderful attendance and great speakers. Um, I see we have County Councilman Paul Herrera today. I hope we're going to be able to bounce in and get an update from you, Senator Gildon. I see. I feel like this is romper room. My apologies. <laughs> it's awkward being on a phone. Um, Eric Johnson, I'm glad you're here uh, in place of Meredith today. I'll continue to kind of poke around and see who else is here. Uh, but for this morning, we do have a planned guest um, that uh, is, is substituting out today because uh, she has caught a bit of a migraine, a bit of a cold. Um, but we've got some great partners now, a new executive director over at the Pierce County Library System. Um, Gretchen Casarotti is the new executive director. Um, one of the I guess more important initiatives for her is to get a Sumner Library up and going. So um, we're really excited about that out in the Sumner community. Uh, today, however, we have Mary Getchell in her place, and we're so grateful you could be here last minute. Uh, she's the Marketing and Communications Director for the Pierce County Library System, and we'll be able to kind of provide us an overview of of where they are at and what we might expect to see um, just about a ballot measure that's being proposed um, to help, uh, you know, build this new Sumner library. So Mary, if you're there, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to you while I continue to try to log on to my computer. Good morning and thank you. And thanks for having us this morning. Absolutely. We can all relate to those technical difficulties. So no worries on any end. At first I was, I can't hear anything. Well, it was all microphone issues. So there we go. So yes, thanks for having us this morning. And I will say personally, out of all of the chambers that we work with, probably the chamber that is closest to my heart is the Puyallup Sumner Chamber, as I have been a South Hill resident uh, for more than three decades. So absolutely, this is the chamber that I probably personally and professionally have individually uh, worked most with um, the members of this chamber. Just to give you an overview, because of course we have Puyallup representation as well, uh, the Puyallup Public Library is part of the city government. So Puyallup and Tacoma in Pierce County are the two public libraries that are part of their department, if you will, they're part of city government. Throughout most of Washington state, most libraries are run by and managed by library districts, such as the Pierce County Library System. And Sumner is one of our 15 cities and towns annexed to the Pierce County Library System for service. So the Pierce County Library System serves all of unincorporated Pierce County and then 15 cities and towns that are annexed for library service. We have 19 libraries throughout the system and Sumner is of a, a, a really a special circumstance. And so we wanna talk about the Sumner Library and our partnership with the city of Sumner, as well as by extension with Pierce County government. And just to clarify, oftentimes people will think that uh, the library system is a department within Pierce County. It is its own entity. It is a junior taxing district, similar to an irrigation district. Uh, so we are our own government entity, uh, although we have a direct nexus with Pierce County and, of course, our partnership with City of Sumner and the other cities that are annexed to the library system for service. So to give you an overview, I'm gonna go ahead and share screen. Let's see how this technical moment goes. And am I sharing screen? Wonderful, thanks for the nods. Okay, so yes, in fact, we are planning toward a ballot measure on the August primary election ballot. And this is to give you an overview. Let me move it. And there we go. Okay. So I'm going to give you an overview of, of why we're even talking about a new library in Sumner. Uh, we have a library. It's on, on Friar there in Sumner. 
Uh, we do have new space, new property for a new library. I want to talk with you about that space. I want to talk with you about what the new library uh, may have as far as services, as far as spaces, and then funding. And that's really what the ballot measure is about, is how to fund that new library. And of course, here, any questions and ideas that you all have. And of course, I can talk with you all day long about uh, public libraries and the Pierce County Library System that as we are moving toward a ballot measure, I can't pro or con, I can only describe uh, the benefits of the new library and that if the ballot measure does not pass, I can also speak to uh, provisions that we are looking toward if the measure does not pass. And currently, as I shared, we have the library on Friar Avenue. We're in a situation there where the city now owns that building. You may know there was a time that we were a partial owner in that property. Currently, the city owns the entire property. So we're a tenant, if you will, in that, in that space. Uh, the space is, is definitely in need of costly repairs. Uh, the space is really too small for the current needs. Uh, it's really outgrowing that space. Uh, the community has outgrown that space. And as you travel along in that corridor in that area, it's in a difficult to access area as well. This new location, the easiest way to say it is, it's across the street from the Fred Meyer. Um, so this new location is 1.67 acres. And we're looking at building up to 20,000 square foot library in that space. The new library, we're really looking at um, all new from an accessibility standpoint, accessibility for all, accessibility for all individuals. It's nicely located, it's walkable, it's bikeable, it's within a neighborhood, it's within an area, shopping corridor. Uh, we are looking at sustainable building practices. So that'd be from energy efficiencies to reuse, recycle of materials. And uh, the library, as, as you know, if you frequent the library or if you simply support the idea for a library in your community, uh, you may well know that the library definitely is the space and place for early literacy. Uh, we are one of the only places with free early literacy services for individuals in any community, let alone in Sumner. Uh, in addition, it's multi-generational. It's, it's people of all ages. It's people using the library's technology. And, you know, we could come over and have some technology classes for anyone here that might want some of our technology classes. Uh, we have technology classes online. We provide certifications. We provide uh, homework help for students. We have a service that we actually work directly with that uh, reviews individuals' resumes, that helps job seekers. And in the new library, what people really identify, and they oftentimes say it's the brand of the library, and we're fine with it. You know, there's been a lot of push and pull over the years of, is books really your brand? Service is absolutely our brand, but, but books is definitely our brand. Um, both the physical books that people check out and the online books and the movies and, and whatever brings them that, that entertainment, whatever brings them that enjoyment and as well as that learning. Uh, the computers and technology, we continue to have a number of people come in and use the technology of the computers as well as Wi-Fi. So they're bringing in their own devices. Meeting spaces are huge in the area. We know we have very few meeting spaces. Uh, in this new library, we'd be looking at additional meeting spaces and study areas. Uh, and really that bridge and that service into the community of, of how can we meet the community's needs um, and have that flexible space in order to do that. The total cost that we're looking at for the project is $19 million in today's market to build the library. We're looking at a ballot measure that is asking for bonds of $15 million. And then we have $5 million that are coming from other entities. And uh, one in particular is the Washington State Legislature just included the Pierce County Library System for the Sumner Project, $2 million in capital funding. So that additional $5 million, $2 million will be coming from the state legislature. And then we also have 
fundraising that has been underway. So we have some private donations that have been coming in, as well as individual, as well as monies that the library system has set aside. Uh, the bulk of the funding would be through bonds in the ballot measure. And the funding is, is somewhat of a, a, a unique funding that library systems have gone to. Uh, library systems um, years ago, and the, the one and only time the Pierce County Library System underwent a bond measure throughout the entire system was in 1986. Since that time, those bond measures for overall funding have become, become very difficult for library systems. So the legislature created library capital facility area and bonds. And what this does is it allows the library system for its entire service area to isolate the area of Sumner in this instance. And in doing so, that's where the nexus with the city of Sumner came in because the city of Sumner is our partner in determining what that area would be and is it possible and plausible to define this area and the city council agreed with the library's board of trustees and so we have defined the city limits of sumner as this library capital facility area so it would be the area where the taxes on properties if this measure passes would incur to fund this 15 million dollars what we're looking at for the average assessed valued home in Sumner is $514,000. So this would be an additional property tax of approximately $10 per month. What's unique about this is, is this library capital facility area would be its own governing body. The Pierce County Council is also a partner in this. The Pierce County Council has approved and passed resolutions right alongside with the Library Systems Board of Trustees and the Sumner City Council. The Pierce County Council has also passed a resolution that forms this LCFA if voters pass it. Then the Pierce County Council appoints three of its members of the County Council that become this board. The board is the governing board of the library capital facility area. The library system operates the library capital facility area building. So we operate the construction of the building. We would operate the services in the building. The bonds would not exceed 21 years and at the end of those 21 years, the plan would be for the ownership of that building, that property is already, the property itself, the land is owned by the library system. That building, if voters approve the library capital facility area, would be owned by the library capital facility area. At the end of the 21 year bonds, not to exceed 21 years, the library building would be transferred in property ownership to the library system. Throughout the entire time, the library system would be operating and managing the building and the services in the building. So the property, as I said, is right across pretty much from um, Fred Meyer. And uh, we're excited about that space. We're excited about that space. Uh, from a variety of standpoints, as I shared, not only the accessibility, the walkability, but something that communities um, have, have known, and, and Sumner probably knows this quite well, but there's been national studies that businesses get a great benefit from having a library. It's a akin to what individuals say from a survey standpoint and from a, a livability standpoint when they're seeking where do they want to live or businesses seek where do they want to site uh, they want secure safety uh, they want parks and they want libraries and so there's a strong benefit and a value of having a library in the heart of the community uh, what we have to talk about is if voters do not approve this bond measure and this library capital facility area, as it is a bond measure, it's 60%, so it's a super majority, 60% of the voters uh, must approve the measure in order for it to pass. There's also a validation component. So 40% of the voters that turned out in the 2022 general election would need to turn out 
in this primary election for validation. So if the measure does not pass, what we would be looking at is absolutely service to the community, library service to the community with a library in the community. It would be in leased space. We would not build a building, but it would be in leased space. And of course, that lease space would be subject to what's available and what's suitable for library space. So that's the overall rundown. And I will strive to shop, uh, stop sharing my screen, which will take me a sweet minute here, and answer any questions that you have. Well, what a fantastic pinch hitter you are. <laughs> that was thorough and concise. And I know that's a lot to kind of get on to the ballot here in, a, in short measure. Um, but yeah, please uh, feel free, anybody online, to uh, go ahead and ask any questions you might have. I don't know, uh, you know, with County Councilman Herrera on the line, and you mentioned um, a partnership there, if there's anything to add there, Councilman Herrera. Yeah, um, so, yeah, it's been, um, uh, we laid the groundwork for you to be successful, and uh, we wait to uh, uh, see what the people of the Sumner area uh, want to do with this. Um, I remember uh, when Puyallup did this, I think, 25 years ago. Um, you know, that library now is kind of like the center of the city. Um, it's a community. It's more than just a library. It's, it's much more. And, you know, you see the changes in Sumner and all the uh, great activity down there. You know, it seems like it would be a great fit um, for it, but uh, we look forward to hearing what um, the people of Sumner uh, want to do with this, and uh, we'll support support that in every way. So, yeah. Good job. <laughs> when I don't have questions, I put people on the spot. My apologies, but thank well, you for that I, extra support. <laughs> I don't. I don't have a question, Tara, but I I do have some comments because I'm. I'm a big library nerd. I love libraries and I feel like they do contribute very solidly to the livability of an area. And, um, you know, you touch families at all phases of their lives. I mean, you take your kids in there when they're little, I think that's really important. That's really important for livability to have that physical structure in that space, community building bulletin boards, all of that. Um, and I, I've been a Pierce County library uh, member for a long time. And I don't even set foot in a library anymore, but I, I get books on my Kindle all the time from the library. So instead of paying Jeff Bezos for your Kindle <laughs> books and Kindle Unlimited, all that, you can just log into the library, download your book, read it, and you're good to go. So that's just my Lori Waltier's two cents. Ah, Lori Waltier's a sharp cookie. That's why she's on <laughs> our team. <laughs> you know, uh, something that's fairly exciting. And it is going to be just a little bit of plug here also for the economic development work we, we do here at the chamber. And that is with our upcoming city to city tour. Um, it's quite fortuitous that the area we're targeting in Boise, Caldwell um, area, uh, Nampa as well. Um, there are two libraries that are pretty state of the art. And, and when you think about reimagining what a library could be, keeping up with the times and what does serve the public best. Um, I'm really excited to learn that Gretchen Casarati, who is now, like I mentioned, the executive director here for Pierce County, she was integral in the two libraries that were formed outside of Boise and Caldwell. And so she has connected us. So as part of our economic development city to city tour, we will be sure to visit Unbound and the new Orchard Park branch um, with their libraries. And, and like I said, it's, it's, it's probably nothing you've ever heard of in the way of um, how much libraries can evolve. And it'll again be up to the Sumner community to see exactly what services and what that might look like. But hey, why not take a look at a firsthand uh, you know, two libraries that did, you know, kind of swing and swing a little differently and creatively. And again, just a, a great insightful tour. So uh, one plug there, especially hoping some of our Sumner contingents decide to come on that uh, tour as well. And again, Gretchen has been kind to connect us with the right people to make that happen over on the Boise side of things. So just mentioning that as well. Any other questions for Mary?
Yeah, you were you were so thorough. <laughs> that worked out great. And we certainly will continue to uh, do what we need to do to push some of that information out to our members so that everybody's informed enough. It's not a big surprise on the ballot that, you know, there's a lot of open mindedness to it. I know, uh, you know, there, there's certainly a desire for it. So I hope the voters do get behind it for you. And, and we get a nice library built. Like Lori says, a great community asset. I, I have a quick question, real quick. Yeah. Sorry, um, Mary. Do you know uh, if there's going to be any any other uh, bond or school bond or anything like that? Maybe say competing um, for this um, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Of course, I have been watching that, and all the filings <laughs> had to be in by the the twelfth and uh, the twelfth of May, and. As far as Sumner voters go, no. As far as the county goes, yes. Um, there's there's um, bonds. There's um, um, definitely levies. There's about oh, about nine, maybe closer to eleven um, tax measures, if you will, before Pierce County residents. Before Sumner, this is the only measure. And a follow up question would be: um, so let's say. The voters aren't ready for this this year. D do we have a plan to try to get it on a ballot again, or is that it? Or we have this one chance, on, you know, just look into the future. Yes, it's always prudent to do that look into the future. And what's a little awkward is the future is now. Uh, so the timing is for a variety of reasons, uh, not looking at 2024. And so it is the 2023 general election and the date to file for all of the resolution, the cover letter, the yes and no committee and the explanatory statement is August 1, the date of the primary election. Uh, so all of those materials are in play right now. And I have filed um, two of the, the four of those pieces <laughs> already with the elections office. And uh, we have one more piece before uh, you, before the county council. It's the same exact resolution, just with a different date on it, um, for the general, the uh, November 7 general election. And then what happens, of course, in mm -hmm. all instead, that if voters approve the measure on August 1, right. then that measure will be pulled from the general election, mm -hmm. but otherwise it will move forward. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I am also, just as a follow-up here, sharing our city-to-city -city tour is scheduled for October 1st through 4th. So just as a follow-up um, to my comments earlier, uh, we've got a jam-packed itinerary with their mayor and economic development um, managers, uh, you know, elected officials, other elected officials, all, uh, you know, taking a part in the revitalization of the Boise area, Caldwell area. So uh, please do check out our website for more information. You know, we had about 20 uh, members that came last year and this included, you know, Meredith Neal from, you know, the city of Puyallup, Mayor Johnson, Councilman King, uh, Representative Chambers, Representative Robertson, and then just a lot of stakeholders, Workforce Central, Coreless Resources, just kind of hitting, you know, Sean Broback from Trackside and Crockett's. So when you get, you know, the added benefit of having such a great itinerary where you're really learning you know, how to avoid pitfalls and, and bringing economic vitality to a city, learning some great ideas of, of the way that, you know, Boise interpreted it. Um, but the other, I guess, added benefit to me are the relationships, you know, when you're with these folks for three and a half days, Chris Linden was there as well. And, and all the inspiration we brought back to our cities, we had opportunities to present both to the Sumner City Council and Puyallup City Council, the foundings. And so it's just such an important uh, trip that we're putting on. It's important work that we're doing just to try to keep shedding light on, again, other ways of looking at economic vitality in cities that have done it successfully. So um, I do hope you will all consider uh, joining us this year on this tour. All right. Well, Mary, again, fantastic job. I look forward to continuing our work with you and great good luck on the measure. Uh, please let lean on us for any way that you'd like us to help mes uh, message the work that you're doing.
Oh, you're muted. I can. Oh, you go. <laughs> Did you see my lips moving? I yes. Can, thanks I, again. I can say yes. <laughs> Thanks again. And, and again, we really appreciate you sharing information about this important ballot measure. So truly appreciate the partnership as well. Awesome. All right. Well, I uh, am going to kind of move, I guess, from state, county to city here and invite uh, Senator Gildon to, to provide us an update. I hope you've enjoyed this last month of, I hope it's been a break for you. I'm not sure that it has, but uh Great to see you and, and love to hear any updates you might have for the group. Yeah, well, thank you, Tara, Lori, everybody. It's good to see you here today. Um, I'm kind of casual today because I'm still taking a little bit of a break. I'm going to go on a yeah. hike here in a little bit. So I'm going to have a little bit of fun today. But um, so we gave a good rundown, I think, last time of the legislative session and what happened during the legislative session. So I'll be really brief today and just give some, kind of some of the updates of what's happening right now. Um, most of the bills that the legislature passed this year will take effect on July 1st. Some of the key bills that are uh, probably gonna be most visible to folks include the new drug possession law and the vehicular pursuit law. So those will be coming into effect July 1st. Another one that's coming into effect July 1st that this group is probably really interested in is that long-term care payroll tax that uh, we've been talking about for a few years. That's the one that will start taking 58 cents out of every $100 and putting that into an insurance account uh, to provide long-term care for folks uh, when they need it in the total amount of $36,500. So if you haven't been tracking it, all of the exemption time periods have expired and they will start collecting that on July 1st. So you can watch out for that. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is, uh, and this is just a little bit of a flavor, legislative flavor that probably most of you don't care too much about, but um, uh, the Senate lead budget writer, Christine Rolfus, the Democrat, uh, she just got selected to be a county commissioner. So she will be leaving her seat uh, on July 20th, or June 20th, I'm sorry. Uh, and then the Senate Democrat Caucus is gonna have to do some reshuffling of committee assignments to figure out who's gonna take over that uh, seat, that position as the lead budget writer. And that will have implications for folks depending on if this person is more uh, you know, apt to spend or to conserve dollars. Uh, and who that's going to be is probably it's unknown. I would think the lead contender would probably be Senator June Robinson, who is the uh, vice chair of that committee for the last few years. Uh, but that's a that's a big committee. That's a big assignment. And uh, that's something to watch out for. Um, another thing that happened in the legislature is we passed a while back. Uh, the capital gains income tax. I, don't, I shouldn't say we, I didn't vote for it, but uh, the capital gains income tax was passed uh, and there was a court, a, a court filing that went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court made the ruling that said it is a constitutional tax. So we just had the first revenue numbers come in on that. And the state was expecting that tax to produce about $200 million per biennium. Uh, when the numbers came out, it was actually $849 million per biennium. So $600 million more than, we, than the legislature was expecting. So a couple of things that immediately come to my mind is we've got to be very diligent to, if we leave the tax rate at the rate that it was set, I say that we should probably reduce it back down to estimates uh, so that we pay for what they actually planned for. Uh, but I do not want to see the legislature trying to grab those extra dollars and shift them over to other areas of funding and just get absorbed. Uh, but the funding is supposed to go to help schools with construction, especially the schools that have trouble passing bonds because their, you know, their economic base may be low and the voters haven't approved school construction bonds. Uh, so that's the purpose. And so I'm going to be really keen on ensuring that those dollars go to the intended purpose. But um, outside of that, I think that's a quick update of what's happened over the last month. 
That's an excellent uh, quick update from our Baskin Robbins flavor of the month, Senator, favorite Senator. <laughs> nice job. Well, uh, enjoy that hike. I, I hope it's somewhere fun and stay safe and, and get, good to see you getting out there and appreciate you making time for us this morning. Uh, County Councilman Herrera, I know we, we bounced to you for a second there, but anything else that you might wanna add going on uh, with updates at the county? Sure, um, I just wanted to say uh, thanks for having me and uh, Tara and Lori, and uh, it's good to be here. Uh, Senator Gildon, um, I know that uh, we just hired a uh, new chief of staff for uh, County Council, and she came from the uh, Senior Budget Council, I think in the Senate. Uh, Julie Murray is gonna be working for us uh, soon. So I, I know uh, she was a great asset to the um, uh, down there in Olympia, but uh, we got her. so. Um, it's going to be a good addition. But uh, so what's going on right now is budget, budget, budget. So uh, a couple years ago, I think two years ago, the county council went to a biennium budget. So that means we're going to be having a two year budget. Um, uh, some of the challenging things that are coming up is the last biennium budget that we did was during ARPA funds. We had America Rescue uh, Funds Act monies um, to to help. Um, um, you know, fund uh, projects and uh, things in the county. So this year, a lot of those funds are already allocated or, you know, they're, they're pretty much done. So um, we have to take a uh, close look on what we're going to do for this next buy-in and budget. Uh, we are going to be having um, some budget um, retreats uh, these next few days and, and through the months, uh, taking a close eye what the county is. Um, a couple months ago, the, the county council came together um, and uh, came up with uh, some of the county priorities to help kind of steer the ship as we go through um, doing this budget. And, and uh, I'm just going to go through a couple of them. Um, housing and affordability here in the county, infrastructure needs, um, homelessness, uh, that's on everybody's mind, behavioral health, mental health, um, public safety, economic workforce, economic stability, and uh, substance uh, disorder. You know, um, a lot of people or everybody on the council really, uh, we're taking a hard look at what's going on on, on on the streets, you know, when it comes to the op opiate epidemic. And me in particular, um, knowing um, how that kind of affects our homelessness and, and mental health and all these other things. Um, so we're taking a, a, a good look at that. So. Um, so we're going to be working on the budget um, uh, coming up. So that's that's my little quick brief um, on what's going on with the county. Great, thank you. And are we are we at a year yet with with your new role there? And and um, we love we love seeing you there. And you're a great representative of our area. So I hope it's been going well for you. Yeah, I've been there since August, um, so I think we're doing nine or ten months, um, and uh, it's been a great ride. Uh, I have a lot of support with um, everybody here, and working great with my colleagues. Great. Well, with your being a veteran, also your public safety background, uh, again, you bring a lot of assets to the table. So we're we're grateful for that. Okay, how about I see uh, we have both Jeff Wilson and Eric Johnson from the city of Puyallup. I'd uh, love to hear any updates from both of you. Jeff, you want to kick us off? Uh, sure, I'll give a, I got a, a quick couple of quickie little things. Um, we're really starting to get into the midst of our comp plan update. So we'll be doing a briefing to the council next uh, Thursday, uh, excuse me, next Tuesday. Um, kind of a, related to that, we're working with MultiCare on their uh, master plan for Good Samaritan. Uh, that is going well. There's a lot of work that's beginning and uh, it's a good cooperative uh, relationship between the two. And they're uh, working with the consultants on both doing an EIS as well as doing a master plan at the same time. So we can uh, move this along related to some of their development and expansion proposals that are hoping to get underway real quickly. Um, Red Dot, I know you know about that project. That is, we're holding calls with them just about three, four times a week to make sure the permits are moving smoothly on it. And they're getting close to having a lot of their work done. I understand they're looking for ribbon cutting sometime in July. So we're going to be excited to have them fully open and operational on that, on that project. 
as far as kind of new, uh, kind of related to new permit activity, we've, we're getting very good hit on our pre-app meetings uh, for some office buildings and office remodels, as well as at least one new multifamily project of 22 units. We did about 135 building permits uh, last month. Most of them, probably the majority of those are related to commercial TIs. And then we've had some uh, new projects completed in terms of some multifamily and a, a few residential projects. Uh, and again, um, quite a few number of TIs that were completed over the last month. I don't know if you can comment. This is a purely selfish question, but Gravity Coffee is practically in our parking lot. I'm really excited about them opening. Hopefully that's going to happen soon. It, sh it should be happening soon. I know there's been a lot of comments. Uh, we're going back and forth. or uh, finalizing a couple of things with our engineering division. And from the last couple of emails I saw earlier, I don't want to say early in the week, late last week, it's not like they're very close to having those couple, last couple of punch list items completed. So we're we'll excited to have that part open as well. Great, great, great. All right. Well, I appreciate you being here today and giving those updates. I know you are also... Um, you know, involved in our economic development committee meeting. So we hope to continue our conversations with you and figure out in what ways the chamber can kind of keep getting in front of um, communicating the permitting process. Um, so expectations are real, um, you know, pitfalls are avoided and, you know, the, the greatest pathway to success is laid out. Um, we, you know, strongly want to be a partner in assisting you with that. So thank you for your eagerness, especially recently reaching out to continue those conversations with us. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because there's. I will be reaching out to you because there's an idea that I want to talk to you about and see what we can put forth in turn just down those exact alleys because I think the communication yeah. part and getting the education part out is the biggest thing that I think we can both do in terms of helping new people come into the community, new awesome. businesses come into the community. Yep. All right. We'll circle back great. together. Sounds great. I right. appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Eric. Hello. Thanks for stepping in. Nice to hey. see you. Good morning. Yeah, I'm awake. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, Eric Johnson. I'm the public affairs officer. Uh, I am not Meredith Neal, so I am stepping in for her uh, this morning and got a couple of updates uh, that she wanted to uh, share with you. Uh, our Parklets program uh, is, is moving ahead. We are in the process of uh, finalizing those. We have uh, seven Parklets that will be operational this summer. Uh, we've got, let's see, a few of them. We've got the Coaster, Cascades, Mazatlan, the Rose, Wicked Pie, the Forum, and then we have uh, one more that's kind of TBD right now that's going through some uh, permitting items, but those are going to be operational soon. So uh, very excited to uh, get this uh, popular program back up and running for the summer. Uh, the other item that Meredith wanted to mention is our uh, food truck program. So uh, we are we just got approval from council to turn that into a licensing program. So uh, the previous process was before, if you were a food truck, you had to get a permit through DPS. It was very long and sometimes arduous process to get that. Uh, we're going to be streamlining that by making that a special business license. So you apply one time a year, pay your fee, and then you're good for the whole year. So perfect timing since we've got, I think the uh, food truck Fridays have just uh, kicked off recently. So uh, Merith is gonna be working diligently on that. So uh, good news from the economic development front. Uh, as far as things that I'm working on, I'm working on the um, new tourism branding uh, project. Uh, if you've been walking around downtown lately, you may have noticed a uh, some new light pole banners that say Puyallup always in season. That's our new uh, tourism marketing campaign. Uh, uh, we are uh, using that program through uh, uh, ARPA dollars for tourism uh, recovery purposes. So we've hired a consultant to help us come up with a, uh, a tourism marketing campaign to attract visitors to Puyallup. So uh, more information uh, coming soon. Uh, the big two items we'll be working on this summer are a uh, visitor guide and a visitor website. Uh, so stay tuned for, for more info on that front. So yeah, other than that, just trying to stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for community, uh, uh, convening so many community partners on input for, you know, where the, that tourism messaging and branding, yeah. you know, was going to land and it looks great. And we were happy to be a part of that as well. So thanks again for that inclusion. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you guys are a great partner. So um, Tara and Lori and other folks from the uh, the chamber were a part of those uh, stakeholder meetings that we had last year. We did a lot of outreach last year to make sure that we get this tourism branding project just right. And thank you, Tara and Lori and your whole team over there for participating. You guys were a great partner. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Lana, am I putting you on the spot? I'm not seeing Ryan. And I know we have some fun rhubarb days and your mother's got her own coffee brand. And my goodness, Sumner is having some fun over there. <laughs> we sure are. We are. Um, yes, I was asked to pinch hit about five minutes prior to this meeting. So I apologize if I don't have a lot of um, in-depth information, but I can do the best I can. Um Yes, the Mayor's Blend Coffee through Delano's is is out. Um, it's, I don't know, the tagline, little nutty, full bodied, something like that. But um, a dollar a of each sweet. bag. Oh, yes, that's it. Um, <laughs> a dollar of each bag goes to the Sumner Food Bank. So that's an exciting um, portion of that. So we're excited for that. Um, but you can buy it at Delano's. Um, we have a lot of construction projects going on if you've been downtown. So um We've been told that they will be open up prior to rhubarb days um, at the end of June. Um, and we encourage everybody to go to the Better Roads Ahead website uh, or page on our website um, for current up-to-date um, road closures, sidewalk closures, um, and how you can get around. Parking is on there. Um, it's Better Roads Ahead on SumnerWa.gov. So that's um, good. Um, but it's looking good down there. It's going to be exciting once we're through mm -hmm. this. So um, Rhubarb Days is June 24th and 25th from 10 to 6 downtown. We're excited that kicks off a busy summer of, of events. That's our first big one here. Um, two days, Sumner Main Street Association is putting that on. Mm -hmm. And then in, in July, um, on the 7th, the 14th, and the 21st, Music Off Main concerts. And then the Chalk Art Festival and the last Music Off Main concert at Loyalty Park is on um, Saturday, July 29th. And then we go into Classy Chassis in August. So it's a busy summer. And then we have our last nights on Ryan, or our only nights on Ryan this year. We're just doing one of those is on August 12th. That's a Saturday. So that's my event report in a nutshell. <laughs> All these great pinch hitters. I love it. Well, we're excited to have a booth at Rhubarb Days. Myself, Deanna, and Hannah will be manning it and looking for any other chamber community members to to pop in and, and help us at the booth throughout the two days. Um, but that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and then, hey, we had a great wind down Wednesday, uh, last Wednesday or two Wednesdays ago now out at the Oxbow Urban Kitchen. What a great asset you have there. Sure is. That's great. I did night. forget one more thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, we are having an industrial business meeting on Thursday, June 15th at Delano's. Um, it's regarding street racing, crime, um, our Sumner alerts, um, transit, library project, um, pre-treatment, and other construction reports. So that's noon at Delano's on the 15th of June. So thanks. Wonderful. Great. Um, I, I will mention, since she was talking about community events, I just put a link in our website. Um, we're really excited. Uh, we are an LTAX, that's lodging tax, um, recipient. Uh, we apply for dollars to help promote tourism in the city of Puyallup. Um, these would be lodging tax dollars that go into the hotels and then get pushed back out uh, for applicants to be able to uh, uh, propose various events and ways that they can bring more heads and beds to the community. So this particular year is a little different for us. I feel like our 4th of July always ends up being a little different. Um, but this year, we're taking a swing at a two-day event. Why? Well, when you want to try to promote heads and beds, um, why not have an event one day that they need to stay for for the next? So uh, in parallel that to that, I will also say pyrotechnics are, have I don't know, I guess they all retired during COVID or, or something or found other gainful employment because that is also another reason it's tough to get a fireworks display show on the 4th. So we have it on the 3rd of July this year. We're excited to uh, kick that off at 5.30, July 3rd. Uh, we will have kind of a tailgating lawn party, if you will, where, you, where uh, participants can, our attendees can park in the gold lot. We'll have a lawn party in the teal lot with a beer garden and three bands and a, and a kid's zone. 
And that's all, both the gold and teal lot are just perfect viewing points to watch the fireworks deploy around 10 from the blue lot. So that kicks us off. And then the following day will be our fantastic 4th of July festival, which we've gotten very accustomed to doing. That's six bands, a huge car show, great market vendors, food trucks, um, just fun for all. And that's a daytime festival from 12 to 6.30. So um, our intent will be to promote to some neighboring cities that don't have fireworks displayed, hoping that they will come and stay at the hotel for that night uh, after the third and the, and the fireworks. So we'll see how that goes, but you all better be out there. We want to see you. It's so much fun. All right. Do I have anyone else that uh, has an update? They may want to provide. I, I, I see we've got Zach from Multicare. Um, you know, I uh, wouldn't mind hearing from Sumner Vet or how long's the wait? I think Mishka's torn her ACL at our cabin last week. How long are we going to wait for something like that? <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> we're actually running at pretty easy wait times right now. So the mornings are best. Thursdays, Fridays are great. Uh, weekends, probably not so great. Come see us. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for that quick update. Hi, Zach. Thanks for being here today. Multicare is one of the sponsors of our fireworks. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Looking forward to them. Um, as Jeff said earlier, you know, mostly still planning around uh, Good Samaritans expansion. Uh, for those of you who might not know, you know, building a new bed tower. Um, Good Sam is one of our highest capacity hospitals in the system. So definitely need more services for Puyallup, Sumner, and the rest of the East uh, Pierce County region. Um, so working on that, you know, all that's kind of TBD for when you when you will start seeing cranes go up, but you know, those be coming down soon. Um, the only other uh, update is that if you're up around uh, Tacoma General or Mary Bridge uh, in Tacoma, um, we're also building a new hospital there right now, um, currently in the demolition phase. Um, so any kind of entrances and maps around the uh, campus there is all changed. Um, if you have an appointment or you're visiting someone there, um, you know, you should have an update uh, in the uh, appointment reminder of new routes to get into uh, the building and visitors area. But if not, I'm just going to put into the chat um, our web page for the construction update. Um, just so you can see there, eventually I'm told that once uh, we the building starts going up, there will be a uh, kind of a live webcam um, that kind of shows progress over time. So um, and that's what being figured out with the construction people, you know, best place to put it and who will be responsible for it. But that'll be coming up soon um, within the next few months as they start laying the foundation and, you know, start putting cranes up um, and that'll be going. But that's about kind of most of it for Multicare right now. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for that quick update. We appreciate it. All right. So just a quick reminder, uh, July, we typically do not have a GAC meeting with the 3rd and 4th of July festivities occurring around that time. So have a, a great July. And uh, we plan to have the Washington State Department of Transportation presenting on the latest with the uh, gateway steering project. So that, you know, for us in our area impacts a lot with the 167 and, and our uh, interchanges in the Sumner area, Bonnie Lake area. So uh, they've got quite a thorough PowerPoint presentation that they've been presenting to us, the steering committee and executive committee that I've asked them to share with this group uh, for the following month. So uh, for those of you interested, definitely tune into that. Any final thoughts or questions before we sign off six minutes early? Okay, great to see you all. Really appreciate you waking up and starting your first Tuesday of the month with us. I hope it's a wonderful month for you all and look forward to seeing you out in the community.